I recently got the chance to stay at the Inn at 500, located in the heart of downtown Boise. With complimentary drinks at check-in and spacious luxe penthouses and suites, it's an ideal spot for celebrations and your visitors. It was the perfect place for me and my husband to sneak away for a little staycation. We loved the cozy fireplace in our room and the balcony with gorgeous views of the city skyline where we shared coffee in the morning. Ready to plan an unforgettable Boise stay? Book now at inat500.com. Today on CityCast Boise. We've looked at why Californians are moving to Idaho, so now we're diving into why some Idahoans are leaving the state. From rising cost of living in Boise to the shifting political landscape, we're exploring the factors fueling this trend and what it means for our area. It's Tuesday, October 29th. I'm Lindsay Van Allen, and this is what Boise's talking about. Joining me today is Tom Wheeler, a local realtor who specializes in inclusive home buying and first time home buyers. Thank you so much for joining me today, Tom. Glad to be back. We've all seen the headlines about how all these Californians are moving to Idaho, but a lesser talked about but equally important part of the conversation is how many Idahoans are moving out of Idaho. And almost 72,000 Idahoans moved out of the state in 2022. Tom, that that seems like a large number to me. Um, As a realtor, would you say that's comparable to previous years in Idaho or was that an increase? I think that In the last five years, especially, we've seen so much movement to and from, like you mentioned. I I don't know. I feel like there's so many factors that would play to that, one of them being affordability. I do think that we've seen an increase in overall average purchase price and an increase in overall median home uh, incomes based on folks kind of moving to and from the state. So I think it's multifaceted, but I do think as Boise is becoming more and more discovered. Maybe it's that it's just a little less attainable in terms of affordability. And when people are moving, what states are they moving to? I I think they're moving really probably still within the Pacific Northwest. I think that that's something we see often is that, hey, I'll go from Boise to Seattle or I'll go from Boise to somewhere in Oregon, Portland. So they aren't necessarily moving out of the region. Maybe they really enjoy the Pacific Northwest. It's maybe not, you know, the region they don't like. It's just something about Boise or the Treasure Valley isn't a good fit anymore. Yeah, I mean, Boise's been described, to me at least, as a bit of a boomerang. Like folks who are from here, I think, move away for a period of time, maybe depending on when that was. But yeah, I think I think folks tend to stay in sort of the the same region from our experience, at least with our clients. And I want to get into some of the specific reasons why long term Idaho residents, maybe multi-generational Idaho families are leaving or have told you that they're leaving. Um, One issue that I always hear getting brought up in these conversations is Idaho wages and cost of living are our lower wages coupled with, you know, the rising housing prices pushing Idahoans out of the state? Well, I think that it's making folks a little bit more conscientious of where where they're going to be. I think that we've seen an increase in populations in more rural parts of Idaho. Not only is obviously Treasure, Treasure Valley and some of the larger cities that are previously established in Idaho growing, but I think those rural areas are growing as well. And folks are, I think, in part doing that for affordability, like you mentioned. We've helped more and more clients in farther and farther out areas based on affordability. So it's someone who works in Boise, maybe can't necessarily afford what they could in Caldwell or Middleton. Those are becoming the second and third ring suburbs. I mean, if you look at developed cities, we're in a city that's not as developed as others, of course, but you have your sort of central urban ring, and then you have your first, second, third, secondary uh, rings of, of suburbs that are just developing more and more here. So I think that those areas are are growing because of that affordability issue. Do people ever bring up economic reasons when they're talking about listing their homes or moving out of state? Well, I think what's interesting is that, yeah, a lot of folks, if they've lived in their home for a while, have a decent interest rate. And they speak to, well, I couldn't afford my house now if I you know, was in the market. And if they have debts to pay off or they have obligations or they're maybe retiring, where they've lived has become this 
cash cow essentially, or this mm. this position of equity where if I have to make a life change because I'm getting ready to retire, or I really have just really wanted to pay off debt, folks are either getting a home equity line of credit or they're selling their property to utilize those funds and maybe pay off some debts and live in a spot that's a bit more affordable. Um, and I think that that's playing a factor in terms of of that affordability. Yeah. And that makes a lot of sense because when Californians move here, often they come with a lot of buying power. Are Idahoans potentially moving to other places and experiencing a similar economic upswell? I would imagine so. I mean, I think we've seen across counties in Southern Idaho, an increase in overall purchase price and median purchase price. I think also folks have the ability to work a bit more remotely, which is as a result of 2020 and the pandemic, the global pandemic, so many more folks have a salary package where, hey, in that movement of wherever you go, you have the ability to work remotely. So I know that that's adjusted. Like I've had clients who've moved here and their company's like, well, now you live in an area that has a little bit more of a, an affordable cost of living. We're adjusting that package. We've, we've heard that. Um, but I do think that that affects those more rural areas that were predominantly working class, a little bit more lower income, now have someone who really wanted to have a hobby farm and chickens and works remotely. And you, you mentioned this. Idahoans like to say that we have a low cost of living here. Is that still accurate? I, I think it depends on who you ask, right? When it comes to housing, I think housing for sure disproportionately has become mostly affected and more unaffordable than other cities where we haven't seen that mass migration that's happened in the last couple of years. So incomes and job offerings have not met the demand of the housing market. And so I do think that, yeah, the folks who've lived here for a long time and we've talked about this in other podcasts, the nurses, the teachers, the folks who, you know, do really, really important work that just for whatever reason are not compensated with the way that allows them to afford housing in this city is is a challenge for sure. Yeah, that's definitely something like I used to be a nurse. My husband is a nurse. And if we just moved across the border to Oregon, we would have each gotten about a twenty five thousand dollar raise just just instantaneously. And cars are the same price in Oregon. You know, phones are the same price. So it's it's one of those really interesting things where with the wages being what they are, it it's sometimes hard to say if our cost of living is as low as we like to think it is here. I agree. I think it's definitely gotten more and more challenging. And I mean, like we've talked about, I think there are more companies like Micron, like Meta that are developing in the in the valley offering both labor jobs but also those jobs where what is the likelihood that they're going to hire local for that or are they going to offer relocation packages and an open house that I did recently for a bit of a higher price point of the listing was around 800,000 we had a, a couple come through they're visiting from Arizona because they're relocating for Micron so i think you know it'll be interesting to see how, what percentage of of those Micron opportunities that are higher paying are being filled by local Idahoans or are being filled by folks who are relocating for that opportunity. Tom, I'm really curious, what is the most interesting or unusual reason that someone has told you they're moving out of state? That is a great question. Unfortunately, the story that comes to mind is a family who has a transgender child who, as a result of, of laws that have been passed that really limit their the family's ability to have a relationship to their doctor and make a decision as a family that's best for them with that right being taken away. They obviously love their child very much and have to look at options for where they're going to be able to move. And we're seeing more of a trend, I would say in general across the nation of people moving based on their air quotes, political affiliation. Unfortunately, I think that's what it boils down to is people who want to be in a state that has a more conservative legislature or does not have a more conservative legislature. That's a, a factor for people when they consider making a move.
This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Hey, Boise, as we head into November, the season of gratitude, it's easy to focus on giving thanks to others, our coworkers, neighbors, friends, and family. But how often do we stop to express gratitude for ourselves? Taking care of you is one of the best ways to show up for those you love, and therapy is a powerful tool to help you learn to do that. This is where BetterHelp comes in. With BetterHelp, you get connected with a licensed therapist for an online appointment that's convenient and flexible, so it fits in your busy holiday schedule. And you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Whether you're working on self-acceptance, managing stress, or finding new ways to appreciate yourself for who you are, therapy can help. So this month, let's learn to be thankful for ourselves too. Let the gratitude flow with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash citycast today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, hel slash citycast. Ryan Reynolds here for, I guess, my 100th Mint commercial. No, 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 don't, no, don't, no. I mean, honestly, when I started this, I thought I only had to do like four of these. I mean, it's unlimited premium wireless for $15 a month. How are there still people paying two or three times that much? I'm sorry, I shouldn't be victim blaming here. Give it a try at mintmobile.com slash save whenever you're ready. $45 upfront payment equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three-month plan only. Taxes and fees extra. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes. See details. Tom, you touched on this, but another reason I hear a lot, and it could be the circles I run in, that Idahoans are moving because of the state's current political climate. What are potentially some other political issues that clients have brought up when they're listing their homes or looking to move? Well, I think that at least in my business, the people I'm working with, they really, um, they do have a awareness of making sure that when they sell their house without discriminating, they want it to go to a, a great family just like anybody else. But I think that depending on where you are in the city, and because we've seen a fluctuation of, of movement, you might have a neighbor that you really feel uncomfortable living next to because of the flag that they wave that I think in years previous, we didn't necessarily have that, which flag are you f- waving mentality? Um, and unfortunately, those clients, if they've been here for a while, depending on you know what their reasons are, feel like, you know what, I just, there's a level of safety or there's a level of community that's missing. And whether that's political or not, they are inspired to make a move. Um, and yeah, we talked a little bit about the family with the, the transgendered child. Um, again, I've helped clients from moving into state that have different um, ethnic backgrounds and have concerns that Idaho is predominantly it's predominantly Caucasian and that's no fault to anybody, but it's a real consideration for folks moving into the area who don't see themselves in their community. Yeah. And even though I asked the question, I don't always think framing it as just like politics is necessarily accurate because it's not just like people disagreeing with the legislature. It's that the laws being passed affect people's access to health care, their legal protection, or like you said, just being able to be safe, being themselves and living their lives. And have you seen an increase in clients who have those concerns or express those concerns as reasons why they might need to move or might be hesitant to move here? Yeah, I think that speaks to what makes our process unique and what makes the work we do unique is that it's not just a real estate transaction. The reason someone moves is generally for a life occurrence. And in the real estate space, we have this saying, it's the five Ds, death, diamonds, divorce, diapers, degrees. So there's generally, and obviously that's a generalization, but generally there's a reason that folks are moving and it's a life circumstance. And the state you live in, the legislature that passes laws that affect how you live your life in whatever community and whatever state you live in affects those five major life circumstances. And so we have a conversation about what those circumstances are. And then we can get into, let's price the home. Let's talk about where we can, you know, place where you can find a place to call home. But that that is a part of the conversation. And I don't think people necessarily think about realtors setting the tone for a community, but that's something that you started to touch on. You seem very passionate about. How do realtors do that? Very passionate about this topic. The barriers to entry for real estate are for real estate agents are quite low. 
unlike your dentist or your attorney or your doctor, you spend years and years in an education system obtaining a degree to do that work. Like if you're going to the doctor yeah. for something major or you're buying a house, like that's a big life experience. And yet the barriers to entry for real estate agents are quite low. And with that, we have a lot of unchecked biases and we have a unique opportunity as a realtor to go into our community and really make sure that we're holding ourselves accountable to our biases and and making sure we're treating everyone fairly. Because the other reality is we don't necessarily have an HR department. If you're a realtor and you put a sign in someone's front yard and you're running your small business, you don't necessarily have the level of checks and balances that you might if you worked in a large company where you have an expectation of how you uphold yourself and how you treat people. And because of that, we've written educational courses and we talk about ways to make sure that realtors are equipped with the tools and education that they need to make sure when they go out to the community, they're doing something positive, which again, most folks are, right? Like assume positive intent. Yeah, but yeah. Education is really the key. Could realtors and their influence potentially be one of the ways to reverse the trend of Idahoans leaving, maybe creating um, a space where Idahoans feel safe or helping them find neighborhoods where they would maybe feel more at home, more safe being themselves? Absolutely. Unfortunately, I think the reality is you have to know who you are and who you serve and what, not that your niche has to be so specific. However, what my values are, who I am as an individual within the community, separate of my real estate business, so, you know, who I hang out with, what I believe in, how I see my community is something that goes into my work. And, and how I see my community is a place where regardless of what flag you wave or where you come from or your political affiliation, we have a shared common values of respect and um, honesty. And, you know, I feel like that's important in the real estate transaction um, of course, you have to make sure that you're not discriminating against any protected classes. I mean, we can't tell folks, hey, you should live in this neighborhood or not this neighborhood. What we do is just provide information and resources for folks to make an informed decision. And as a result of the what flag are you waving, when we drive through neighborhoods, that's going to be more obvious in other areas, right? I mean, that's a result of let's go look at homes in this area. Let's go look at homes in this area and they're going to have different feels, that's up to the client to make that decision. We just offer the information and resources. Tom, do you have any advice or tips for anyone who might be looking to list their home and maybe move out of the state? Going back to those major life circumstances, that's always where I return in the conversation of should I move? Because there's to the point of, oh, if I live in this state, well, I have this issue or that issue, right? Like there's no such thing as a perfect world as much as we wish that there was. So we always just go back to that discovery conversation of what will this do for you? What is the motivation? Um, because that's most important. That's central to the question. From there, we can get into specifics, the market, the numbers, how to be successful in doing so. But you really have to have a strong why because it's a huge life transition. Yeah, absolutely. Tom, thank you so much for taking the time to explain what you've been seeing, trends, and what people should know about the market and what's happening here. Thank you so much for having me. That's all for today here on CityCast Boise. If you enjoyed the show, leave us a review. Or why not send this episode to a friend? We'll be back tomorrow morning with the creepy true story of the Boise murder house. You won't want to miss it.